Everybody good? Get ahead and start on opening these now. Please, everyone, please. Everyone, please, take a communion cup. Even though you may be sitting there thinking to yourself, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. You've been lied to long enough. You've been lied to long enough, okay? Now, of course, the Bible says, let every man examine himself. All right, let me paraphrase that. In Bartlesville terminology, that means, to me, that's every day. That's an attitude. That's a disposition of asking God's grace and mercy and His forgiveness. Amen. 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 We should walk. We should walk in a spirit of repentance unto God. You know, not a fear, not a fear of sin, not a fear of anything like that, but just a, a, a thankfulness, a gratitude. Uh, uh, an attitude of gratitude towards God that we should walk in, in, in His ways and in His fullness each and every day of our lives. So, Father God, we'll do that very thing. Father, if there be any sin in my life that would hinder my relationship with you, with you Father God, I ask that you forgive me in the name of Jesus. Now, watch this. I hope everyone, I hope every one of you took time just to, just to ask God, you know, to continue to cleanse you, forgive you. Now, guys, watch this. And I'm going to paraphrase, okay? The Bible talks about on the night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took the bread and he said, this bread represents my body, which was broken for you, okay? Now, the Bible says he broke the bread and he told the people to take and eat of it. Now watch this before you do that. Take and eat of this bread, it represents my body. He said, as often as you do this, remember, you're no good, dirty dog. Well. <laughs> Guys, how many, how, you don't have to lift your hand, but for years and years and years and years and years and years, that's all I ever heard from the pulpit. You're not worthy enough. You're going to go to hell if you take that communion. You're going to drop dead in your boots right where you stand if you take that communion because you might have forgotten about a sin that you committed one time and, and, and God's going to get you. Are you kidding me? <coughs> Jesus said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me, of him. Amen? Amen. Amen. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of Christ Jesus. So let's take the bread and let's eat this bread together. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father God. Amen. In, in, in protecting in the bread. You partake in the Lord's body. Now watch this. Everything that Christ Jesus went through physically in his body is bought and paid for for you and I right here, right now. We took that bread, the bread of life, Christ Jesus. We took that bread receiving the promise. He said, any and everything that has to do with life and godliness in this world, it's already bought and paid for. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, and on the same night, <coughs> Jesus took the cup and he lifted it up and he blessed it. And he told his disciples, he said, I want you to drink of this cup. And as often as you drink of this cup, remember, you're a dirt bag. Remember, you're worthless. Remember, no, that's not what he said. He said, remember, do it in remembrance of me. Christ Jesus, do it in remembering everything that I have done for you. The blood represents the blood of the new covenant of Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 So everything that we possibly could have need of in the spiritual world was bought and paid for by the blood of Christ Jesus. In the natural world, the bread represents the body bought and paid for by Christ Jesus. 
The wine represents the blood. The more the, the, the new covenant, the more excellent covenant. So as often as we drink this, this, this cup and we eat this bread, we do it in remembrance of Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So let's drink together. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Deb, before you sneak out the door. Happy birthday to Deb. Happy birthday to Deb. Happy birthday to Deb. Happy birthday to Deb. Now she hates me, but she'll hate me. Happy year. 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 Happy <laughs> okay, children, we're going to. Yes, children. we're going to toss you over the wall. Anyway. Thank you. Everybody okay? You get me today. Great. Yay. I'm going to get Maybe need some bigger buckets. Yeah, we got some in Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So watch this. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I just and forgive my uh, terminology when I say this, but Father, this spirit of funk, I rebuke in Jesus' name. There's a funk up in here, and I don't. It uh, it's not allowed here. I command every unclean, unholy spirit that you cease and desist right now. And I command you into the dry places in the name of Christ Jesus, where the Spirit of the Lord is moving. There's liberty, and there'll be liberty in this house. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father. That was Jesus. off the cuff. Thank you. Let's get real. It's not normal, is it? Thank Let's get real. You. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost has prompted me. He said, there's a funk in here that you need to deal with. I'll never forget Pop Hagen talking about uh, he was blessed that, that, that Jesus Christ appeared to him a number of times in his life. And then Jesus told him, he said, You'll not, I'll not appear to you anymore, like in this manner. Uh, he said, from now on, I'll deal with you just like I deal with every other person on the face of this earth. That inward witness. That inward witness. But Pop Hagen was talking about, he said, um, that he and Jesus were having this conversation and he said, there was this little monkey-shaped, monkey-looking thing, thing, that started jumping up and down in front of him, just screaming and hollering, saying, yakety yak, yakety yak, yakety yak, yakety yak. And he said, Jesus was giving him some very important information. I mean, that's, I mean, he was, he was receiving direction from the Holy Spirit from, from Jesus Christ. And this thing just kept on and on and on and on and on. And he said in his thinking, he was thinking, Jesus, I can't hear you. I know this is important. I can't hear you. Why, why don't you do something about this thing? Why don't you? And he said, then just up out of his spirit, he said, I rebuke you. Spirit, I command you out of here in Jesus' name. And he said the thing just dropped to the floor and, and just lop, lolly, made his way on out of there. And, <coughs> and he spoke to Jesus. He said, Jesus, why, why didn't you do something about that demon? He said, I couldn't. And Pop Hagen said, I, I looked at Jesus and I said, no, I know I misunderstood you. It sounded like you said you couldn't. You mean that you wouldn't? He said, no, I said I couldn't. He said, all power and authority and dominion I've given unto you. Amen. 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 And he did that for a reason. He gave us power and authority and dominion <coughs> over the works of the devil in this world so that we can walk in victory. Some of us walk in half victory. Some of us walk in no victory. Some of us walk in just barely saved and barely getting by. Some people are getting the hang of it. Some people are starting to grab hold of the fact that God is good. Watch this. Good God, bad devil. <laughs> Didn't take a minute for somebody to grab hold of. Good God, bad devil. So who are you going to serve? The good God. 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 Amen. Amen. Hey, if you have your Bibles this morning... And I know for a fact I grabbed everything I needed to do except for that. But anyway, we're okay. <laughs> it's all right. We'll make do.
Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12. 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. If you need to look in the front of your Bible to find out what page that is, right, I'll, we'll give you time. That's not a problem. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Marines, simplify. What verse? <laughs> You're wrong. Not there yet. Thank you, Father God. Praise you, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, starting with verse 1. All right, I'm going to try this. I hope I don't get tangled up now. Hold, hold Grandma and Jack when you say don't get tangled up in your dress gown, your sleep gown, your dress gown. Anyway. Hebrews chapter 12, starting with verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Wherefore, seeing we are encompassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses, what is that cloud of witnesses? That's those that have fought this fight before and have won. That's those that have been in the battle before and have won. That's those that have gone on before us and left their legacy saying, you can do this. It's those grandmas. It's those mamas. It's those sister-in-laws it's those people that have spent time in prayer over you and now they see the fruit they may or may not be here to see the fruit of their prayer but you're here you're born again and you're serving god amen amen, amen. so great a cloud of witnesses those that have gone before us did it before us amen, amen. so so if, if they can do it you can do it amen. that's the witness statement right there and i've told you time and time again two groups of people watching you people that hope you succeed and people hope you fail the ones that hope you succeed, they're like, man, if you can. Yeah. If Terry Lee can do this, I can too. Amen. 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 And then you got the others hoping you can they'll, that you'll fail. Man, I'm just waiting for Rando to fall. As soon as he falls, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh. They're waiting for justification. They're hoping you'll fail. <laughs> it's like to say, see there, what's the use of me even trying? But we're surrounded by so great of a cloud of witnesses. Those that have made it before us. Those that are living it each and every day of our lives. Amen? Amen. Each and every day. Now let's look at the weights. And the race that we're called to run. Now watch this. Catch this good right here. Let us lay aside every weight in the sin. We need to realize that the weight and the sin are two totally separate things. Two totally separate things. Let us lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets us. Okay? God's called us to be many different things. Uh, he's called us, he's called us to be Christians, to be seen by other people. Okay, Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 through 16 says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, <laughs> but on a candlestick. And it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now we're going to get somewhere. We're going to lay aside the weight. Okay, sometimes God calls us to be farmers. Okay. He calls us to be light. You are the light of the world. He calls us to be farmers sometimes. And this is a parable. The farmer went to sow seed. And we've heard this time and time and time and time again. Some fell on, on stony ground. And some fell among the thorns. And, and some fell on good ground. He's called us to be farmers. How many of you understand? It takes work to be a successful farmer. It takes diligence to be a successful farmer. we got a farmer sitting right here. Grew up his whole life farming. Praying for rain on some days and no rain on others. Amen. 
I need the rain, Lord. I need the rain. I need the rain. Uh, as soon as I get this disc up out of the ground, Lord, bring the rain. Or this, this, this planter up out of the ground, send the rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Then comes harvest time. He's praying, Lord, hold off that rain. Hold off that rain. How many of you know it takes patience? It takes endurance. It takes diligence to be a farmer. Amen. But yet God refers to us as farmers as well. One place in Luke 9 and 62, it says, And Jesus said to him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight. For no man who ever put his hand to the plow and looks back. Remember Lot's wife? Yeah. Uh-huh. So farmers, we're, we've been called to be light of the world. We've been called to be farmers. Sometimes he calls us to be a carpenter. For which of you intending, wait a minute, let's back up a little bit. So, so a man built a house on, uh, on, on, on the sand and the, and the storm came and beat against that house and, and that house fell and great was the fall. But yet another man built his house on a solid foundation. That same storm came, that same storm came, those same winds blew, that same rain fell on that house, but it stood. Why is that? Because he laid aside every weight. Now watch this. Luke 14 and 28, For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Are you in this thing for the long haul? Amen. Are you in this thing for the long haul? Yeah, Are you yeah, serving yeah, Jesus yeah, till Jesus either calls you home or comes back to get you? Yes. Are you doing it to do it? Or are you just doing it to make an appearance? Lay aside every weight. Sometimes he calls us as soldiers. Ephesians chapter 6, starting verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Soldiers. We have lots of military. We have, and, and I am so, uh, there's not anybody as American as I am. American. I'm American. American. I'm proud to be American. But I'm talking about. There's no one more proud of this nation and this country than I am. And, and, and I praise God for our men and women and the families of our Amen. men and women. Amen. Amen. That sacrifice Amen. so we can live in this free nation, one nation under God. Amen. And I'll say it again, one nation under God. Amen. Not under, not under Buddha, not under, uh, Allah. what's that Islam guy? Well, they call, Keep going. Who? Allah. Allah, yeah, not under Allah. Uh, not under anything else. My God sits on the circumference of the earth. Amen. <laughs> he holds He holds the stars in the palm of his hand. He named every one of those stars. Anyway, that's a whole different message. We're going on. <laughs> now, sometimes he calls us to be teamsters, union workers. Then he said to them, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. What does that have to do with teamsters? Guys, it, 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 back when Pete was fishing on the boat, you know. It wasn't like we do nowadays and we get our bass tracker with our 200 horsepower Merc on the back and our, our Vance locator and, and trolling motor and all that kind of stuff and we flipping jigs up under the brush piles and you know what I mean? That's not what it was about. It was about dragging nets. It was about dropping nets. It was about dragging nets of, of fish back up into the boat and it was like getting that boat over to the shore and, and getting and cleaning and, and it, it, it's not the kind of fishing. It's not the kind of fishing that we think about. It took teamwork. And it took work. Once again, it took work. Lay aside every weight. But this passage of Scripture is, uh, refers to as running a race. It's talking about running a race uh, on a track. And, and the Apostle Paul, uh, he no doubt took all this imagery from, from the Greek games, you know, the Olympic games. We call them the Olympics, okay? Uh, even though, now watch this, guys. Even though... We are in a race, and we're running a race together. Our race is not against the First Baptist Church. Our race is not against the Assembly of God Church. Our race is not against First Presbyterian Church. Our race is not against the Catholic Church. 
Now watch this. Believe it or not, our race that we're running is not against each other. It's not brother pitted against brother, brother pitted against sister, and sister against sister. Our race that we run is the race of faith for Christ and Jesus. Amen. The only one we're in competition against is Satan, the Amen. enemy. Amen. He's the only one. He's the only one. That's the only reason that we're fighting this good fight of faith is because we have a real enemy. Lane one, First Baptist Church. Lane two, <laughs> Nazarene Church. Lane three, Give Real Ministries. I put us yeah. on three because of Trinity. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and the starter pistol, bam, and it goes off. <laughs> this race that we're running is not a hundred yard dash. This race that we're running. It's not who's going to get there first, but who's going to get there finally. Amen. The race that we're running is an endurance race. Shadow's sister, Mandy. Hey, Mandy, she watches a lot of times. She runs these triathlon things. And I can assure you, she don't just get up out of bed one day and decide, I'm going to run a triathlon. She trained for it. She purposed in her heart that she's going to do this. She even had to say no to a lot of things in her life in order for her to be able to run these triathlons, laying aside every weight. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, they like take off running and, and run, I, I don't know, they, they run 500 miles and then they swim 300 miles and then they get on a bicycle and do 800 miles all in one day. I don't know how they, I mean, it's a whole bunch of miles. You know what I mean? I know it's not that many, but to me it would be. It'd take me years to cover the kind of grounds that she covers in one day. But there's an endurance. There's a perseverance in that race. Now watch this. The Greeks laying aside every weight. Paul was in reference to the Greek games. Now watch this. Runners in that day. I'm going to say You ever drove down the highway and stuck your arm out the window? Or rode your bike without a windshield, you feel like a human parachute. You know what I mean? <laughs> the resistance. The resistance. In the Greek games, and even nowadays, in the Greek games, they would strip down, they'd take their toga. Can you imagine running a race in a toga? Remember, toga, toga. Anyway. Do I need the bow sign? No. Anyway. Okay. Can you imagine running a race in a toga? They come out of that toga. They come out of everything they possibly could come out of without being completely naked. Because any type of resistance would affect their outcome. Any type of hindrance would affect their outcome. Any unnecessary weight pulling down on them or, or catching wind or whatever would hinder their outcome. Even in today's racing world. The, the, the race suits and things that people wear now. It's like, I mean, it, it, they're... It's crazy. It's crazy. They want absolutely no resistance. They want no weight holding them back from being successful. They're purposed. They're diligent. They've determined in their heart that they're going to run this race with endurance. Now watch this. There's going to take some. Th there's going to be some things in our lives that we're going to have to lay aside. There's going to be some things in our lives that we're going to have to say no to. There's going to be some things in our lives that, that your neighbor is going to be like, Ugh. kind of narrow-minded, isn't it? Now you're splitting hairs. Watch this. The bottom of the space shuttle has all kinds of configurations on it, doesn't it? It's got round places and wings and tanks that come off and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to get that thing started. But once that thing gets off of the ground, just a little ways, parts and pieces start flying off. Parts and pieces start dropping off. Amen. As they're going higher and higher and higher. And the last thing that you have is this bullet shaped, uh, aerodynamic, uh, wind resistant, whatever you call it, vessel that's shooting into the heavenlies. They lay aside every weight, every weight that would hold them back. They need the power to get off the ground. But once they're up and running, all that stuff falls off. 
It has to fall off, guys. It has to fall off in our lives as well. We can't carry the same things around with us that we used to carry around with us and expect to pierce the heavenlies. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's four things. This past scripture says, let us lay aside every weight, every besetting sin. Let us gaze steadily at the one supporting us, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, and we do it all patiently with steadfastness. We're never told to run a speed race. Never are we told to run a speed race. <coughs> this is where I'm going to get in trouble, but it's okay. It's really sad in today's Christianity how shallow so many, so many people's relationships are with Christ and Jesus. How shallow it is. Now, guys, please, I, you know me, I'm not a, I'm not a beat-em-up pastor. I'm an encouraging pastor. But how shallow so many people's relationship with Jesus Christ is, it's like a desert storm. Okay? You familiar with the desert? There's these, there's these dry tracks in the, in the sand somewhere that, that, that hike, hikers are warned, don't ever camp in, don't ever hike in, don't ever, anyway... What happens is there's a there's a, there's this great big storm takes place all of a sudden and it's a fast storm and it's a lot of noise and it's a lot of lightning it's a lot of thunder it's a it, it, it it's 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 that 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 I'm saved experience but then there's no follow up and that big storm turns into that flash flood and that flash flood turns into just a trickle and then that trickle dries up that's sad. Now watch this. It's a shame that in a lot of a lot of people's lives, a lot of Christians' lives, and you're not gonna like this. It's like my Christian walk consists of I come into church on Sunday, I put on the choir robe, and I sing as loud as everybody else. When church is over, I take that choir robe off and I hang it up and I don't ever think about it again until next Sunday. How sad is that? I'm telling you the Holy Spirit cannot speak to our hearts if we don't have any kind of depth, if we don't have any time, kind of commitment, if we don't run the race with endurance, if we don't purpose in our heart that we're going to run this race with everything, everything that we are, mistakes and all. Mistakes is okay. It's okay to stumble. It's okay to fall, but it's not okay to lay there and wallow in it. Amen? Amen. We've got to get up. We've got to keep moving forward. The Holy Spirit cannot talk to the black ops Christians. You know, the ones sneaking around undercover. Don't want nobody to know that I'm a Christian. <laughs> he can't speak. The Holy Spirit can't speak to those. Neither can the Holy Spirit speak to the self-righteous. Oh! <laughs> Neither can he speak to the contentious. Those that got that big stick and stir it you know typically the one that stirs with the stick has to lick the spoon when it's all said and done i like that <laughs> you want to stir it go ahead you'll be licking that spoon for long <laughs> neither can he speak to, to the contentious nor can he speak to the backbiters nor can he speak to the gossipers nor can he speak to the slanderers nor can he speak to the boastful. Nor can he speak to the proud. Sincerity towards God is a must. We have to have a sincere heart towards God. And we will never walk this walk perfect. It will never happen in this flesh will we ever walk this walk perfect. But so long, God looks at the intent of the heart. Amen. Amen. So long as we keep our heart focused on him and purpose to do what's right. God can speak to us. Amen. I don't remember who we was talking to the other day, but uh, I may have mentioned something about deep calling to deep. Scripture talking about deep calling to deep. We're talking about that little shallow uh, uh, burst of a storm thing that happens in the desert, and then it dries up and it's gone. How many of you have ever, ever been underwater? <laughs> you ever heard of a ski boat from the other side of the lake while you're underwater? Or kids packing rocks or whatever, playing and stuff. I mean, how sound travels underwater? Submarines, 
Nobody can even speak. Nobody can even say a word when they're in silent mode because even their voice will travel throughout the waters. Guys, we got to go deep. We got to lay aside all those things in our lives that would hinder our relationship with Christ and Jesus. I can't tell you what those things are. I can give you a laundry list of about a thousand items. Three of them may hit you or 847 of them may hit you. I don't know. Let every man work out his own salvation in fear and trembling. I can't tell you everything. I, I can show you in the Word of God what the Word of God says is wrong. And then you take it from there. That's between you and the Holy Spirit. But the whole thing about this message is that we have to lay aside some things in our lives in order to run the race and to win the race, to finish the race. Who wins the race? Everybody that finishes. There's not going to be one person standing there that gets this big old fancy necklace around his neck and says, hey, you're the first one here. Because guess what? There's lots of people already there. Whoever finishes this race wins this race. Whoever puts his hand to the plow and turns and looks back isn't even worthy. You don't take a light, a candle, and you put it under a basket or put it under the bed. You set that light where it can be seen by all people. Amen. Amen. You purpose in your heart when you sow your seed, you sow it in good ground to bring back a mighty harvest for the kingdom of God. Right. You have to lay aside some of those things. I don't know what those things are in your life. I don't know. But I do know who God won't talk to. And we ran down a few lists. And guys, I've said this time and time and time again. The only prayer that God ever hears from a heathen is the prayer of repentance. You can pray till you drop dead. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, help me. And he, he doesn't hear you because you're not his. <laughs> it looks like what? He won't hear the prayer of the heathen unless that prayer says, forgive me, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's the prayer that he hears. Amen. 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 So you can cry out all you want to cry out. Being an ungodly person, it does absolutely no good. No good whatsoever. Who does hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? Those people that lay aside every weight as they're presented to you. If you think for a minute that, that, that it's a one and done deal, if you think for a minute that you got born again and all of a sudden you're good, I'm good. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. Well, that may be okay, but you're not finished. Amen? Amen. Amen? Because every one of us have things that are hindering our walk with Christ Jesus. You just hide yours better than I do. <clears throat> so who's going to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 5. Yes, Lord. Guys, if we don't lay aside every weight, that weight may be a TV show that you're watching religiously. That weight may be some... Music that you're listening to. I don't know. That weight might even be some people you're hanging with. Do you know how to determine whether or not the people that you're hanging with are the people you're supposed to be hanging with? Just talk about Jesus every time you get around them. They'll either stay or they'll go. If they go, they weren't supposed to be a part of your life anyway. People, places, and play things. Gee, that sounds familiar. People, places, and play things are things that we're going to have to change in our lives, guys. If we expect God to ever speak to our hearts, if we expect to grow past where we are now, if we expect to be that space shuttle, if you will, that goes on and on and on into the heavenlies, we've got to lay aside all those things that hinder our walk with Christ Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, and these are the ones, this is a small list, but these are the ones that are going to, going to be able, the Holy Spirit be able to speak to. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, 
And when he has, uh, was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened up his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, those are, that are humble, you know, have a humble attitude, a humble spirit, hungry for the things of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. You ever cried out for anybody in your prayer time? Have you really ever interceded for anyone in your prayer time? There's no greater blessing than that, than the intercession. You know what? I, I, I Getting woken up, at, awakened or woken or whatever you call it at 3 o'clock in the morning is no fun at all. Unless the Holy Spirit's prompting you to pray. Pray the prayer of intercession. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We, I, I'm not going. I'm not going to dissect every one of these. I just blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those who will lay aside the weight. In other words, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Hallelujah. They shall be filled. Hallelujah. And when we hunger and thirst for righteousness, Amen. we won't hunger and thirst for the things of this world. The things that cause us to look away from God. The things that, now watch this. Intently watching God and following God and listening for God. There's things in this world if we don't seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness will cause us to start doing this. It's subtle. It's very subtle. Just that little glance. Just that little distraction. Just that, oh, it's okay. It's just a little sin. Oh, it's okay. It's just a, you know, it's, it's one of those white lies. Oh, it's okay. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's just somebody else's wife or somebody else's husband or it's just somebody else's motorcycle or somebody else's house or it's just somebody else's money or it's just somebody else's something else something else something else anything guys those things quickly distract us and get our eyes off of god seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these other things will be added in what things whatsoever things that you pray whatsoever things you believe when you pray things like what god wants us to have a nice home he does he wants our cupboards to be full Wants us to have transportation so that we can get around. He wants us to have finances so we can sell it to the kingdom. Why is that important? So more souls can be added to the kingdom. So you can be a farmer, amen. amen. So you can be a carpenter to help build the kingdom of heaven, amen. amen. Mm. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Oh, some of us need to go to school on that one. Self-righteous <laughs> bunch of, not us, them other people, them other churches. <laughs> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You know, Scripture says, without holiness, no man shall see God. Without holiness, no man shall see God. What do you mean by that? Well, let me give you the, the Oklahoma interpretation of that. Without holiness, no man will see God. Or woman. Well, that's impossible. Then you just called God a liar. Because he said, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Oh! So what does that mean? It means you're going to have to lay aside every weight, everything that's distracting you from, from serving God. Every, that's awful narrow. That's awful. So is that rocket ship. But it keeps going higher and higher and higher. Look at those airplanes, the jets, how they cut through the air. Look how arrow is, is designed. The less resistance, the faster and further it goes. Amen. 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 Lay aside every weight. And the sin that so easily besets us. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. I haven't made a whole lot of peace lately. But that's okay. I've been doing my best to be a shepherd. That's your job. We'll doctor the wounds later. 
Amen. 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 Well, we're going to shepherd first. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. What does that mean? For you standing up, being right, and doing right because it's the right thing to be and it's the right thing to do because that's who God called us to be and that's Amen. what God called Amen. us to do. Amen. And if you're railed against, if people Hallelujah. come against you because of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. you need to, you need to right. dance a jig. Amen. <laughs> you need to be happy about that. You need to raise a hallelujah. You need to do something. If people come against you because you're a child of God, you should rejoice in that very fact. Amen. At least they see Jesus in me. Amen. At least you're not one of those black ops, you know, one of those other undercover Christians. At least you're stepping out and stepping up and, and ready to be counted worthy for the kingdom of God. Do I want to get my head chopped off? Well, not particularly, no. <laughs> no thank you. Am I going to deny my Jesus? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What can man do to me? Send me to God quicker. Yeah. Send Amen. me to my eternal yes. home quicker. Right. Amen. Win-win. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. This is Jesus talking. Guys, we're talking about laying aside every weight. We're talking about that stuff. Well, it's okay. Remember that little dried up stream in the river? Holy Spirit can't go deep in that. You can't fish in that. You can't swim in that. We have to have a relationship with Christ Jesus deeper than superficial. We have to have a relationship or purpose in our heart to have a relationship with Christ Jesus that goes way beyond your comfort zone. Amen. I'm going to try to close right here. I remember when I got my advanced open water scuba dive and I had to make my night dive and it was pitch black and I was down 78 feet and I literally had to turn my flashlight this way to see which way up was and I dropped my weight belt set aside that weight that was holding me in that dark place I was deep I was deep, and it took the light. I know that's metaphorically, if you will, but it took the light for me to see which way up was, and I dropped that weight. Here I stand today. Lay aside every weight. Whatever's in your life that's slowing you down, that's hindering your relationship with Jesus, you need to drop it. You need to drop it now. Well, I can't. I've had this addiction for 47 years. Well... Time for it to end. It's controlled you long enough. Yep. It's true. And, and guys, please, I used to smoke anything that burned. So I'm not I'm not I'm not coming against you. I'm not coming against you. I don't know how many times I stood out in the freezing cold. <laughs> Had to smoke that cigarette. That puppy controlled me. All those things controlled me. That's just me personally. I love Jesus more than you all. Hallelujah. I love Jesus more than you all. Whoa. And I was praying. <laughs> hey, that's my relationship with him. Okay? <laughs> and I was praying. I said, Father, cigarettes. Cigarettes. I love you, Lord. Sitting white on the assembly of God. And the enemy jumped up on my. I didn't recognize it was him at first. It's such a sweet comforting, subtle voice. I said, Rando, you backed up this smoking thing with. What you need to do is just go ahead, stop coming to church for a couple of weeks to get this thing finished so you won't be having that guilt and stuff when you walk in the door. And you'll be through with it and everything will be all right. And it was so subtle. It was so peaceful. It made so much sense the way that he spoke it to me. I'm like, wait a minute. 
quit coming to church. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Amen. That was the voice of the enemy. You know what the Holy Spirit said to me? He said, what do you want more of? Those camel lights or my anointing? Hallelujah. I had a choice to make. I had to drop that weight. I said, Lord, I want more of your anointing. Amen. Bam, it was a done deal. It was a done deal. Let us lay aside every weight. Okay? Guys, I can't tell you what your weight is. I can't tell you. Only you and the Holy Spirit knows what those things are. So if you'll stand with me, please. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't anybody leave. I want to give you an opportunity. If you have a weight that you know is a weight to you that you're dragging, just slip up a hand. Hands all over the building. Hands all over the building. Those of you that are watching by internet, lift your hands up. Everybody just lift your hands and pour. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, Father God, I love you. I love you. And I confess that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is, is my Lord and Savior. Is my Lord and Savior. This day forward, this day forward, I set aside, I set aside this weight. This weight. You speak it out in your own heart. This weight of whatever it may be, I lay it aside, Lord God. Only by the strength. Only by the your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit, Spirit working in me, working in me. Take me deeper, take me deeper in you, Lord Jesus. In you, Lord Jesus. I love you. I love you. And I praise you. And I praise you. And I thank you. And I thank you that I've been delivered. And I've been delivered from this weight. This weight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Guys, um, the good things a little backwards here. <laughs> While you're standing, while you're standing, we're going to take up our offerings. Look at this. Yeah. People that know about giving, listen to them. They know about giving. They get excited. And the reason I have you stand is you can reach your wallet easier. That is not true. That is not true. That is not true. Pastor, you've been so good today. Don't get that bow sign at the last minute. Okay, guys. Those of you that know us, you know what these red bowls are. These red bowls are an opportunity for the church to sow into your life. Now listen, listen. Hey, Mike, listen. These red bowls are an opportunity. I'm going to split you two just like the teacher used to do me and Jimmy. Anyway. Well, that was not good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. These red bowls are an opportunity for the church to sow back into your life. Okay? Now guys, if you have hungry babies... Feed your babies out of these bowls. If they need a bag of diapers or a gallon of milk, get a bag of di diapers or a gallon of milk. If you need a tin sack, you better keep your hands out of the bowl. If you need another phone, you better keep your hands out of the bowl. Guys, I, it, it is so sad that I have to do this, that I have to say this. But it is what it is. We're doing this so we can sow into people's hearts that want to give something back to the kingdom. Amen. The Bible says God gives seed to the sower. That's the person that purposes in their heart to sow. There's people that would love to give an offering that have zero, have nothing. Here's your opportunity. Here's your offering. Go ahead, guys. So, Father God, I thank you for the men and women of Get Real Ministries. I thank you, Father God, that they understand that if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added in. Now, Father God, I thank you. I thank you for the seed sown this day. Yes, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father. Pastor David, have you seen anything like this in a while? This, this ain't right, is it? It's awesome. It's awesome. It's beyond right.
Yeah, it is. Our church has prospered because of this. I'm serious. I'm serious. You guys go ahead and grab the tithe. Come on. I have a lady hunt me down. I have a lady to hunt me down. She does. She won't take no for an answer. Where are you guys? When are you going to be back? i got to get my tithe to you. <laughs> I mean, she's adamant about it. And she gets that tithe in because she knows that's where her blessings are tied to. Plain and simple. <laughs> so, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the gift and the givers of the gift, Father God. We ask, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that you would bless every household represented here this day, Father God. And, Father, the gifts that are received, we receive with gladness. And, Father God, that every single penny given, Lord God, will go exactly as you directed to go in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people said amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Danny, go ahead and punch the, the music button. Okay, everyone, we love you guys. Thank you for being a part of Get Real Ministries. If you need special prayer about anything, come on up. Uh, those of you by internet, you can you can send a, uh, an email to uh, pastorando at outlook.com. Uh, Kevin.bound0771 gmail.com. It's going. Or they could message us on Facebook. Watch this. So there was a motorcycle event yesterday, and I said, I got to go by and see my mama. My mama's not been feeling good. Hey. This is here again. I don't know, six or seven other riders Please mounted up, and we rolled into awesome. mom's house. My mom and my sister come walking out the door, and they're like, What the world? I said, Mama, I brought you some real prayer warriors, and she's here today. Amen. Amen. Amen.